and welcome along to the match as we look ahead to Real Madrid's first away game of the La Liga season. The Whites travelling to Granada on Monday evening. With me as ever to preview the game is Sid Lowe. Sid, welcome along. Thanks very much. Now, last season it was Real Madrid's away form that really cost them in the league, so it's very important they make a good start on the road. Yeah, and in particular, look at it, look at it from the point of view of what this game represents. Last year their away form was particularly bad in Andalusia, where Granada are from. One of the way away games in which they dropped points was at Granada when they lost 1-0 with a Cristiano Ronaldo own goal. And what really cost them was three games in which they didn't win of the opening four. And of course we're still in that opening four game spell after a first week in which they were close to not winning. So I, I think all of those are ingredients that, that bring home to Real Madrid that, that they need to go there and get, and get a victory. And obviously if they can play well then perfect. But the key thing is make sure you win. We'll talk about the Granada game in just a moment, but first we do have to reflect on what was a very, very special night at the Santiago Bernabeu on Thursday evening with the return of the legendary captain Raul for the Santiago Bernabeu trophy coming back with his current side, Al Saad. And it was just an emotional evening for everyone. Half past 12 at night in August and the stadium was absolutely packed. Um, after the game, journalists, as we always do, went down to the press area and we could hear this big roar. And this was about 45, 50 minutes after the game. And we realised that the roar was the fans who stayed in the stadium cheering because Raul had gone back out again. Basically, they'd been chanting, we're not leaving here till Raul comes back out. So he did. And I think, I think it's those kind of spontaneous gestures of, of affection which probably reach people even more than the kind of the, the, the grandiosity of a, of a, of a fantastically well-coordinated event. But I think those spontaneous little gestures are actually the things that people really remember. Like, for example, Raul joining in the photo, like Ika Casillas giving over the captain's arm, Band, Cristiano Ronaldo swapping shirts with him, like uh, Jesse chasing him after, pretty much chasing him after the game to get his shirt off him, and of course Raúl, top scorer in the club's history, three times Champions League winners, and and I, and I think there was a sense that that this needed to be done, and in the end it was done in in exactly the right way. Got his goal as well. Not a bad finish. That wasn't a bad finish, actually. And obviously, as you can imagine, quite a lot of jokes immediately on Twitter and stuff. It was saying, well, there's this guy we could do with signing the number seven now. Now, of course, I think the reality is we, we all know that it's three or four years since Raul was, was at his best, of course. And that's natural. That's, that's just the way, way life is. But he, he looked all right, didn't he? It was more, the thing that struck me wasn't so much the finishing, although the finishing was good. It was the way that he was running around, pointing and gesturing and stuff. It's like, it's a friendly, <laughs> relax. But of course, that's one of the reasons why, why Raúl was so successful, because in terms of pure talent, he didn't have the talent that, for example, a Zidane or a Ronaldo had. But what he did have was a competitive edge that I think a lot of players simply don't have. Really was a great evening on Thursday night at the Santiago Bernabeu, from quite a happy occasion to some less happy news. And the fact that Xavi Alonso has picked up a metatarsal injury and will be missing for Real Madrid, well, for at least a couple of months. I mean, it is a bit of a blow, but we were speaking earlier and you were putting a slightly positive spin on yeah, it. Yeah, I think there's two ways of putting a positive spin on this. The first one is to say, um, it's good that Real Madrid haven't lost a player from, for example, the middle of the defence or haven't lost their central striker. From the middle of the midfield, you've got Kadira, you've got Casemiro and you've got Modric who can all broadly play the Xavi Alonso role. Not as well as him and not in quite the same way, but all broadly can play that position. The other way of looking at it positively is that in the last couple of years, I think one of the key reasons why Real Madrid have not quite been able to take the leap over that final hurdle in the Champions League was because in April, May, Xavi Alonso reached the end of both seasons really struggling physically. Now, an injury is never good news. It's certainly not good news for a 32-year-old who's had a couple of other injuries, and it may take him a little while to get back and to be at the same sort of level. But from the point of view of Real Madrid and the point of view probably of, of, of Xavi Alonso himself, at least it's now and not the end of the season. And it may well be that this enables him to come back slowly and actually in the spring and early summer, when the competitions are decided, when it's really those decisive moments, and when Madrid's team is good enough to win early in the league anyway, maybe at that point we might see a Xavi Alonso in better condition than we've seen the last two seasons. There we go, a nice positive spin. That's on one way things. of looking at it, definitely. Absolutely. Definitely. Yeah. Um, on to the game in Granada then on Monday night. And let's talk a little bit about the Andalusians, who last season gave Real Madrid one or two problems at Los Carmenes. And also this summer, they've reinforced well, they've made some good signings, and they, they could be a decent outfit. Yeah, they could be. I, mean, I think it's 14 players, um, 14 players, sorry, 13 players left. You look at the side that played the first game of last season, so the 11 players and the three subs, in other words, 14 players, only two of them 
um, are likely to start this weekend. 13 players left in the squad from last year's squad. In other words, virtually half the squad is gone. But I think they have reinforced reasonably well. At the weekend, with, with Al Arabi in particular playing well, I thought they were, they were pretty good against Osasuna. And I am also of the opinion that it's not just that I think they've moved reasonably well in the summer transfer market. I actually think that this improvement can be traced back to the back end of last season. Because when I said then, you know, 14 of the players who started last year, only two still there. Yeah, OK, but of the players who ended the season, six or seven, I think it is. And by the end, I think Lucas Alcaraz had built a side that was really starting to function. I think with time, with a good pre-season under his belt, with a couple of interesting signings, um, with a relatively stable structure at the club, I actually think Alcaraz is going to make them into a team that's primary objective will be survival. But I think they'll secure survival early enough that they might just, just be able to think about something more. Could be a tricky encounter then for Real Madrid on Monday night. Let's take a look at who Sid thinks is going to be starting for Real Madrid in Los Carmenes. And just talk us through the starting eleven, which looks suspiciously like what you predicted last yeah, week. Yeah, I think it's exactly the same as what I predicted last week. And, and of course, we were wrong on two players, which were Ica Casillas and Alvaro Arbeloa. The reason why, and it's not just because I, I'm one of those people who makes a mistake, it just keeps on insisting and digging and digging. The reason why I go back to those two is that, that um, Carlo Ancelotti seemed to be implying last week that the reason that Danny Carvajal played ahead of Arbelo was purely that he had an advantage because Arbelo had travelled with the Spanish national team. In theory, that advantage now has gone. I think away from home, he may well want the slightly more defensive-minded of the two fullbacks to play. And, and Danny Carvajal struggled a little with Cedric. The other one is Casillas, and of course, this is the big debate in Spain at the moment, which goalkeeper will be played, Casillas or Diego Lopez. It was Diego Lopez last week. Logic suggests that Diego Lopez will continue. But Ancelotti, after the game, said that it had been a decision for that day, not necessarily for the rest of the season. Now, it could still be for the rest of the season, um, but uh, to be honest, I had to toss a coin, pretty much. Diego Lopez for Casillas, and I've gone for Casillas, but it, it wouldn't be a huge surprise if Ancelotti doesn't agree with me. Granada against Real Madrid is on Monday evening. Let's take you all the other fix through all the other fixtures in La Liga this weekend and get Sid's all-important predictions. Last week you did very well with your predictions. Let's see if you can match that effort. Getafe against Almeria is on Friday night. Getafe. As is Athletic Osasuna, which is being played in San Sebastián. Yeah, it's a curious one, that. Um, athletic. Uh, Elche against uh, Real Sociedad. Real Sociedad, who were brilliant in the Champions League qualifier midweek. Espanyol against Valencia. Mm, I think fence sitting time on this. I'm going for a draw. Fair enough. Uh, Villarreal against Valladolid. Villarreal, who I think we're going to enjoy watching this year. It's a, a capital clash at the Calderon and Atletico Madrid take on Raya Vallecano. Atletico with the one doubt as to whether or not they might need to rotate having had two games in a week. Uh, La Rosaleda sees Barcelona, the visitors, to take on Malaga. Barcelona, although they look like they'll probably be without Leo Messi. Uh, Levante against Sevilla. Sevilla. Betis against Celta. Betis. And Monday night, which way is it going to go? Real Madrid. That's what we hard like to, to see. Hear. Hard to see any other result, to be honest. Score prediction? Real Madrid 3, Granada 1. OK. Uh, there you go. Sid has predicted a 3-1 victory for Real Madrid. That's all we've got time for on this edition of The Match. Hope you've enjoyed the show. From Sid and myself, it's adios.